welcome to the Hawthorns, uh, welcome to ExpressTotar.com. My name is Johnny Drury, I'm alongside Lewis Cox. After Albion have been well and truly Warnocked, they've lost here in the 96th minute to a winner from Huddersfield after dragging themselves back into the game with a superb equaliser from John Swift. Josh Badger almost won out of the death. Coxie, a bit of a signal that, wasn't it? Yeah, some way to go into the international break, yeah. isn't it? That It's always a way, isn't it, before an international break you get the sucker punch. Um, yeah, it wasn't particularly good at all, was it? In fact, it was pretty bad, uh, that one. I, I think even at 1-1, Huddersfield was a better team. Huddersfield, and Carlos Corbett's just agreed in there, hasn't he? For, said for large parts, Huddersfield were better than his side, and that's quite damning. I mean, I, I, don't think, I don't think Huddersfield are as bad as, from what I've heard, going into today, you know, winless and all of that, but they, they were just from the fifth minute onwards, probably better than Albion today. And um, at one all, you're thinking, well, we haven't played well here. Um, and Albion will take the point. You know, we're at home, it's disappointing. Huddersfield have been the better team, but you take the point and to get that sucker punch at the end is is uh, right, kick in the teeth, isn't it? Especially as, you know, 30 seconds earlier, we think Josh Madge is in here, first goal, you know, this is proper lift off for, for him. For a new signing like that, just before the break, what right moment this could be, smash and grab almost, blink of an eye. As soon as you see Huddersfield tearing down the pitch towards the Smerwick, you just you feel like you know what's coming, don't you? Coming, don't you? Yeah, you and um, yeah, I think Huddersfield deserved it. That's um, a bit of a sad way to round off that point. I think. Yeah, it is indeed. Um, you know, Corbrand talked about it in there, and you asked about it. I've been banging on about it all afternoon to anyone who will listen to me and Baggies fans will be sick of me by the time uh, they've digested all our content I'm, I'm sure they won't I'm literally just writing a piece on it now but you know when Albion played played it sharply played it quickly you know I don't like saying that the coach's manual but through the lines you know they they looked such they, they looked really quality when they slowed it down it's there was no intensity in today, ponderous is the word you used that I was going to steal from you yeah um I said, like almost lethargic a little bit, but when it slows down, Albion don't look a good side. I did, I did put that to the head coach, and his his answer on that was um, far more technical than I can have the memory to relay on here. Talked about, set, but he, he, he talked about the responsibility of the centre halves and the, yeah, all yeah. the people on the he, board. He talked about the system, didn't he? And how there's um, there's one spare man with the two systems that went on today, and how the spare man was initially Townsend wasn't used often enough, went in space, um, later became, the spare man became a centre half and Alvin didn't drive when they had the chance to and that's what we talk about with tempo isn't it and ultimately you know slow fast whatever, different speeds to use and ways to play, there weren't enough chances were there, Alvin didn't, Josh Madger at the end in the 95th minute, 96th minute I can't remember another clear chance. I mean, obviously we've had the John Swift equaliser, which, by the way, there were balls totally in, against the run at play. Yeah, there were balls into really dangerous areas that needed a gamble, which I suppose you yeah, don't remember. So many, no, so many of those. Yeah. Um, uh, but that's a common theme, isn't it? I mean, a running theme and a continuing theme. I can think of loads from Phillips, less so from Wallace, whose form remains um, indifferent at best. He's, he's struggling, isn't he, with confidence? You can see that, and obviously he was, he was brought off Pretty early, 60 odd minutes um, for the changes for Sarmiento. Um, his impact was really good, wasn't it? He, he was sharp, he was creative, trying to make things happen. But in terms of that end product, wasn't able to, he had one shot, but wasn't able to find a killer cross or killer pass. Um, obviously, the manager being a later change had, had that moment. But other than that chance, I don't think, you know, against, let's, let's have it right. I said Huddersfield aren't as bad as their record suggested or whatever, but this, you know, this Huddersfield probably going to be in the lower reaches of the table this season, isn't it? You'd, you'd imagine. Um, and Albin didn't create nearly enough, did they, to, to merit merit the three points. I'm not sure they created enough to merit a single point, really, but you take it and take your medicine, don't you? And Instead, they're going to have to take a lot of medicine after that, over 15, 14, 15 days until the next next game. It's going to be, um, well, it's an international break with lots to work on, I think, after that. Yeah, it sounds like Carlos is going to be stewing for the next two weeks now, the way he was... Uh was talking there just finally you know we look at it five games in two wins two defeats and a draw that's I'd correct say. yeah yeah that's correct. right yeah yeah, yeah. Um, you know alright today's not great but no time to sort of 
panic no. or would you change no, things uh, for Bristol City? No, I mean, well, things changed today, didn't they? We were, it, it, it was actually we knew Shemi and Joey was ill, but by the way, Eric Peters had illness as well, which ruled him out at the start. So I think the hand was kind of forced with a back four, to be honest. Although Corbin doesn't mind that, he doesn't mind switching and have different options. I think it was slightly forced. Um, I, I, I wouldn't panic too much. We've had 24 hours on from the deadline day, aren't we? Which is a whole new scenario we haven't really spoke of yet together. I know, I, mean, I know we'll do a podcast, but uh, a new signing. Yeah, uh, right back in Pippa, right wing back. I know we're going to see he's going he's to come in and he's going to be exciting by all accounts, from what I've heard from the head coach there and others. Um, key pairs were held on to. That's that's a positive, isn't it? Regardless of how today went, you know, Tom Sante, Yukushlu, others. Um, Swift in the goals, by the way, two and two. You know, some productivity um, is good. Um, so I wouldn't be, you know, ma- major panic or anything like that. I mean, we went into today in terms of on the pitch. I think we glass half full, didn't we? Really, in terms of. The start overall. Let's not be too reactive, and let's, you know, post international break. The, the the new signing will have had time to settle and bed in. Hopefully, we see him straight away. Sarmiento and Madra should be able to start realistically, shouldn't they? Um, I'd expect to see that down at Bristol City, isn't it? Even though I won't be there. Yeah, you won't be seeing that. Well, no, no, I won't. No, I won't. I'll be seeing far too much sand and sea for that. But uh, I will be following. Don't you worry. Um, yeah, but let's not let's not panic or throw our toys out. Let's just reflect and accept that it was poor today. And um, yeah, they've been okay for a few games, haven't they, on the back of that Blackburn opening day? But um, not at the races today, I didn't think. And yeah, a bit of pill to swallow today. It was.